Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. With me today is Daniel McAdams, our co-host. Daniel, good to see you. How are you this morning, Dr. Paul? I am doing well, ready and raring to go. All right. To discuss the issues of the world. But I'd like to say we have a little bit of good news today. Good news. I That's like pretty good, news. good, you know. <laughs> uh, and uh, we like to look at polls. We know uh, their limitations. But when they favor what we do, we really like yeah, them. We really like them. <laughs> but this was not uh, our poll. We, we didn't do this. I, I think uh, Hill, Hill did the poll. The Hill and Harris X, yeah. Yeah, they did a poll, and it just came out yesterday. So uh, I'm sure a lot of people looked at it, and even the people who disagree with us read it and look at it. But the big thing here is that uh, more than half of the Americans, I think, it's a reasonably good idea for uh, Putin to meet with, uh, with uh, Trump uh, in the White House. Some people, uh, you know, don't like this. The media doesn't like it. The Democrats don't like it. The Re Republican never Trumpers, they don't like yeah. it. But if, if we sort it out like we like to do and not even look at it as a partisan issue uh, as, as much as whether this is a good, good idea, talking to people, and of course, we've always come down as I mean, Yes, this is a good idea to talk with people. And uh, yet people are really, really bugging and trying to put a damper on it. But they did that when Trump, they tried, I think the indictments came out a couple of days before. They didn't want him to go, uh, you know, to Helsinki. Yeah. But that happened, and now the people have, the majority of the people have supported this. And now this is the next test. Uh, will the, will the uh, demagogues and the uh, uh, propagandists and the media convert people? We complain a lot. They're very powerful because they can sometimes convince people to uh, go to war. In this case, the people have defied uh, the recommendation by the media and by the anti-Trumpers that, no, he, they shouldn't invite this very bad guy, you know. Khrushchev and, uh, and Stalin, these guys were okay. No problem. <laughs> but, but not Putin, because he, he, he is an enemy. And, uh, uh, he's, and, and Paul Ryan says, he, he's, not, uh, he's not an ally. So if you're not an ally, he's an enemy, and that's why he decided that he is not going to speak before the Congress. And there's been some controversial characters that have gotten a chance to speak. I always wondered about that. Why are they getting this opportunity? And, and, and none of them declared that they were uh, a libertarian. <laughs> they were all authoritarians that get to speak there. So, so anyway, this, this is a little bit of good news. Uh, uh, not only do the majority of Americans uh, support this idea in spite of all the propaganda. Uh, it looks like uh, it's a little bit good news for Trump. We say it's good news for diplomacy, but it looks like it's maybe big news, uh, good news for uh, for Trump. Yeah, indeed it is. And this, as you say, was a, the Hill and Harris X polling company uh, was a joint project of theirs, and it came out yesterday. 54% of Americans overall across the board support Trump's proposal for a follow-up meeting with Putin, uh, which is, uh, as you say, surprising given the media environment, but also, as you alluded to, that number when you count Republicans, 87% of Republicans support another meeting with Putin. Uh, that's incredible, uh, and I think, yeah, good news on the political front for President Trump. He understands that the battering that he took from the media, absolutely incessant from all sides, left and right, simply wasn't echoed in the, in, the, in the feelings of the American people. They didn't agree. Yeah. The, the, only, the only issue that I continue to struggle with is this is good. The people seem to be catching on. Maybe a little talking is good. And yet, if you look to the key advisors <laughs> of Trump, they're not enthusiastic. They're, they're quiet and they're obedient at the moment, but they're uh, also uh, in the neocon camp. And uh, certainly there's been policy that uh, Trump has performed that is very much in support of the neocons. But in this case, it's sort of challenging them because uh, uh, they, they are interested, uh, many of the special interests that make up the, uh, you know, the deep state, uh, they, they need a little contention going on. They need a little battle going on. We have to have justification. There's, there's budgets to be passed, trillions of dollars to be spent, weapons to be built. So you can't, can't go too far in getting rid of the enemy. I mean, they've softened their stance at the moment with North Korea. And besides, they weren't capable of much of a fight. 
But uh, now uh, the Russians are, they see them, the neo, you know, the neocons, and they, uh, they're probably pretty nervous about this. But they, I think this is uh, some good news, and, and uh, I'm encouraged because uh, people have some good common sense. Uh, I think that uh, we're getting messages sent out by Tucker Carlson that seem to be helpful yeah. in our message of a little bit of uh, common sense and diplomacy. Yeah, I was going to mention you talk about the neocons that he has on his on his staff working for him who seem to be completely at odds with him. Nikki Haley was quoted yesterday saying, we're never going to be friends with Russians. They're the enemy. We're never going to trust them. When her boss is saying the opposite, it's, it's remarkable. But you mentioned Tucker Carlson and he had um, uh, Doug McGregor, Colonel McGregor, who we had to do one of our Republican lunches, if you remember, on the Hill. Uh, had a very good segment where McGregor said, "Thankfully, the president doesn't seem to be listening to his advisors at all." <laughs> you know, so it's funny you got you got Nikki and you got John Bolton yapping, and the president just doesn't seem to to bother with him. Let's hope he continues that way. Yeah, and uh, you know this whole thing about Ryan, you know, he's not coming, and he spoke up rather quickly. Yeah, and uh, I don't, I don't think. Putin's going to lose any sleep over it. I don't think Putin thinks, oh, my goodness, I've been, <laughs> I've been demoted. Because a lot of people are arguing that uh, he's doing pretty well on the world stage. But uh, this whole thing, I think Congress continues to lose. Uh, Congress uh, uh, should be involved in foreign policy. What do you mean? What do you mean they should be involved? Well, you know, uh, the, the word foreign policy doesn't exist in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, there's presidential responsibilities. But most of it is legislative, especially with the Senate for the appointment of individuals. Uh, the House uh, has the position of, uh, uh, of uh, dealing with foreign, on foreign, foreign commerce, uh, funding of all these things. So they're very much involved. Uh, but... Uh, I, I would say that it is um, a bit of an insult when you compare it to other people who have spoken. And this since, since uh, really Russia probably be close, closely aligned with, with China, two countries that could challenge us, that it makes sense to talk to people like this. And uh, I, I think that unfortunately uh, uh, there's positions going uh, that the administration take right now that's you know, sort of offsets this when, when they get too anxious to place sanctions on, on, on people and place tariffs on people and, and currency devaluations going on. Uh, that's a negative. But when it comes to just a little bit of uh, diffusing this, uh, this antagonism, I think it's good that they can talk together. That certainly is better than, you know, breaking off uh, diplomatic relations. Yeah, and, you know, we expect from the Chuck Schumers of the world, uh, he said... Uh, Trump, you better rescind this uh, invitation to Putin. Don't you do it. <clears throat> We'd expect that, and to a degree you'd expect it from the Republicans, but viewing the polls, and particularly the Republican numbers, 87, 90 percent of Republicans approved of, of, how, he, um, of, of, of how he handled the summit. Uh, when you look at those numbers, you'd think that the Republicans in Congress must be incredibly stupid to jump on this uh, anti-Putin bandwagon. Here's Ryan, Speaker Ryan, Speaker of the House. I'm comfortable having presidents sit down with one-on-ones with foreign leaders, but what matters is the message. And the message is, stop meddling in our country. Stop violating our sovereignty. We will certainly not be giving him an invitation to do a joint session. That's something we reserve for allies. Yeah. So it's this negativity, and it was echoed by Senate Majority Leader McConnell, who said the Russians better quit messing around in our elections. I want to make that perfectly clear. Well, there's, there's two things about that. He infers and makes accusations that are uh, very distort. Uh, it's, di it's distorting the real issues, and quite frankly, it's a lot of times untrue and about the collusion, all this thing, and, and the great enemy. But it, um, it also says that, um, you, you know, there's, a, there's good reason for us to be talking to them, and uh, we, we should do it, but uh, I think that... Uh, that Ryan, uh, you know, misses the whole thing. I think the Congress has disconnected from the people. And uh, th that to me is something that uh, is, is crucial, uh, that, uh, that, 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 that you have, you know, tune up with the people. And I keep thinking back to the drug war, you know, the uh, drug war, the people were way ahead of the Congress. And I think on this, this shows the people are ahead. But it also means that this is just a little bit, I said a little bit of good news, but it does mean that when the people have instincts, they move in the right direction. So in spite of all the publicity about this, uh, this uh, radical war on drugs, uh, it was challenged. And now this radical war uh, against Russia, 
Uh, you know, the other thing that bothers me about Congress and Ryan is they say this as if we were angels. Now, uh, they're not angels, we're not angels, but uh, if they would have put this in context, even modern context, did we have anything to do with the uh, changeover of the government in in uh, in Ukraine? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know we we participated in a coup, but they won't listen to that. They are in total denial, and then they just march on and say the whole problem is on on the other side. So that's that's part that I don't like. We open, they openly admitted in 96 that we meddled in the Russian elections. There was a Time magazine cover saying, Yanks to the rescue. Uh, <laughs> there's widespread speculation that Hillary Clinton was involved in the 2011 Russian uh, elections trying to undermine uh, President Putin in a re-election try. But, you know, I think if, if, because if, everyone's pushing Trump, if you meet him, you've got to push him around and say, stop meddling in our elections. I think Putin should say, that sounds like a good idea. Let's make a deal. <laughs> we won't meddle anymore in any other elections. If you promise to do the same, the freeze for freeze. We'll have a treaty. treaty. We'll have a treaty. No more meddling in election. Yeah. Well, uh, that, that wouldn't make Americans happy because we're way ahead of them in the game. <laughs> you know, uh, I heard the number we've repeated. I heard it repeated the other day about uh, we were involved in 80 elections uh, between uh, World War II and, and the year 2000. But that's, that poll was stopped at the year 2000. I think if oh, you yeah. add, I mean, I think you've sort of mentally have added more and said it's probably closer to 100 yeah. when you add up everything we've done in this century. So we're very much involved. And how is it that we're supposed to expect uh, good negotiations and fair play and good relationships with the other world of the country when we're able to lie our way into this and do what we claim? It seems like the louder people yell and scream about somebody doing something that they're doing it themselves just think of the people <clears throat> that are yelling and screaming about collusion you know with russia it looks like those people who were claiming re republican collusion were more guilty uh, than the republicans yeah. <laughs> and you know this poll you could say oh you just cite one poll what's it mean well this tracks with other polls there was a poll by axios done last week that showed 79 percent of republicans approved of how trump handled the summit in the face of a hundred percent media opposition. And I was going to ask, you know, what do you think that means for, for the midterms coming up? You've got Republicans running against something that Americans explicitly favor. What would you do if you were a young candidate? Well, if I, was, if I were on their side and didn't want this to happen, I'd panic and I'd keep uh, fighting. But they're panicked. But uh, I would probably try to advise them, don't act like you're panicking and, make, and digging a bigger hole for yourself. No, I think it looks very bad. Now, what's going, what they pray for is a conflict, a military conflict that they can say, see Trump, his policies failed. Uh, they're praying uh, for a stock market crash, yeah. you know, and an economic downturn, which unfortunately uh, is going to be out there. And in spite of the fact that Trump won't be guilty, he'll be blamed. But he wanted to take credit for the booming stock market. And that's, of course, a different matter than that is monetary policy. But boy, I'd, I'd try to uh, warn people. But I think, uh, you know, the media pumps it up and say Republicans are in trouble or Republicans are in trouble. And, but every time they do another poll, there's a slow creeping upward that Trump is getting. And that sort of is, is pretty amazing. But all that can be canceled uh, and, and they should be prepared for, be prepared for it because the economic policy and uh, and and a downturn, uh, which uh, probably can't be severe enough to totally affect you know the uh, uh, the election because we're getting close. But uh, it it could still come. We still could have you know some sudden changes that will shake up the confidence that they think they have and that the media is portraying. They they should be more cautious. And you think about, uh, there's another, there's another uh, question in the poll that was also fascinating. 61% of Americans, of all Americans, 61 say better relations with Russia is in the best interest of the U.S. 90% of Trump voters said that. So if you, if you are looking at the midterms in November and you're signing on with, your, with the Democrat, uh, 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 basically pro-war, pro anti-Russia Democrat uh, uh, party and you look at these numbers, you're going to be concerned, I think. And if you're a Republican who's trying to be a big hawk on this issue, you're going to be concerned. It would be a little bit ironic if Republicans taking a cue from the people returned to being the anti-war party that they were in the 50s. Well, I think philosophically they're living in the past because uh, 
even though they called themselves liberals and uh, progressives, they were very socialistic. They like uh, socialism and socialized medicine. And instead of looking and saying, maybe the country's not with them and to maybe moderate this a little bit, uh, the radicals are coming out of the closets. Those who were just good uh, progressives are becoming radicalized and they're campaigning through the country now as socialists. Mm. And I don't, I don't think um, this is a real good time uh, for them to be preaching socialism. And uh, when you see moderate and middle road Democrats losing some of these primaries, uh, I, I don't see where they should have overconfidence. They're hoping that the style that uh, Trump has, which is questionable, yeah. he really stumbles and hurts himself. That's what they're waiting for. Yeah, I think so. Here's another tidbit of information I picked up that might be interesting uh, for the viewers. Uh, you know, the uh, National Defense Authorization, <coughs> excuse me, National Defense Authorization Act, uh, uh, NDAA conference committee is meeting. They're talking about how to how to uh, how to uh, put the Republican or in, in uh, put the House and Senate bills together, and they agreed uh, in the conference committee to give Trump more latitude to waive sanctions against entities that do business with Russia. So there's a tiny, tiny little opening, uh, giving a little bit more leeway to the president to stop punishing uh, companies that do business with Russia. So there's a, that's an interesting little little twist. You start wondering if the pendulum is shifting. But um, I would close simply by <laughs> reminding the viewers, uh, you know, uh, Ryan and the others say we can't have Putin address Congress because Trump, because Putin meddled in our internal affairs. He meddled in our sovereignty. But let's be honest, when uh, President Obama was president and he was working on the Iran deal, what did Congress do? They invited, they invited a foreign leader to, to address them for the specific purpose of meddling in our policy, and that was Benjamin Netanyahu, the right-wing right -wing leader of, of Israel, who came and addressed Congress lobbying against a deal, and the Republicans in Congress supported against their own president, many Democrats too, against their own president. So this whole meddling thing is, uh, is kind of, uh, it can be, uh, you know, interpreted many different ways. There's one problem with that argument and with my arguments. We sort of hope and want to work for, work for a bit of consistency. And consistency is not what they're looking for. They want to be consistently wrong, you know, and just preaching this big government stuff. And it, there's so much that we, we talk about, you know, with the tariffs and the sanctions and what the president should do. There's way too much power in the presidency. So if you have an Obama or a Trump, believe me, they'll exceed the limits. Then the president's eternally, ex every president adapts more and more. And just because we had a Democrat in, it, it's a steady uh, increase in more government and continue with foreign entanglements. So I just hope in these cracks in the door that we emphasize and express and, and compliment people for will really get people to think about, uh, you know, what they're doing. And it's a shame that, uh, you know, even though our Constitution is imperfect, it has some pretty good suggestions in there and it would slow things down. You know, the president shouldn't be able to just march off to war. And when there is this mistake, you pay for it and, uh, and, and demand that, that money and troops and sanctions uh, are, are solutions, and they aren't. Uh, the, to me, the only solution is, is reigning in the government and also stimulating the desire for liberty among the people. Without that, you know, all these messages just fall on, on deaf ears. So Congress won't do anything uh, because uh, they have grown silent. They don't think the people, they're way behind the people. Now those voices need to get louder. They got loud in the 60s when they got sick and tired of the war. They need to get louder now to rein in the government and also send a message to Congress because uh, this, whole, this whole idea that, that Congress, when they finally do exert themselves, they're on the wrong side of the issue. Like, don't let them come. Don't let them talk. We don't want peace to break out. Well, anyway, let's uh, concentrate on a little bit of good news today and let's hope that we get a lot of good news someday. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report and please come back soon.